Hello, this is Jessica Fox from Florida Virtual Bookkeeper, and today I want to show you how you can record a bounce check in QuickBooks Online. We don't like it when this happens, but sometimes a client may give you a check that is returned by the bank, so how do you enter in the books? There are several steps that you'll need to take to accomplish this. The first thing that we're going to do in this particular case, Cool Cars had paid invoice 1038 and on May 3rd and unfortunately this check was returned to the bank. So what we are going to need to do is we're going to need to record the fact that the money came out of the bank account. We're going to need to record the bank fee that the bank probably charged you for the NSF charge and we're going to need to update the invoice to show that the customer owes you that amount again. So the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to create a new invoice and we're going to create two items. So the first, we're going to enter the customer cool cards. The date is going to be the date that the check bounced from the bank. And we're going to create two items. One of them is going to be an NSF fee. So if you don't have it already created, you will click add new. And we are going to map that to bank charges. That way it will offset the fee that you are going to be charged by the bank. Some people prefer to record that as income. If you're in doubt, consult your tax advisor. And then I am going to save and close. Now I am going to put in here in the description whatever is most uh, appropriate for the situation, however you want to explain it to the client. So fee for bounce check. And let's say we're gonna charge them $25. That is not taxable. And then we're gonna create another item for the bounce check itself. So we are going to create, click on add. And once again, we are gonna create a new item in this particular time. Um, we're not gonna link this to an income or an expense account. We're gonna map this to the actual bank account that the check had been deposited into and it's being withdrawn from. So in this particular case, it's gonna be checking. So if you have multiple bank accounts, be very careful about this. You want to map it to the correct one and if you have situations with bounce checks in the future, you may need to create multiple items, each linked to the correct bank account. Then we're going to save and close. Then we're going to do a return check and we're going to do $750. Now that that's done, you will then uh, update the message on the invoice to uh, return check or whatever information you want to add and we are going to save and close. Now, another thing that we need to do then is we're going to need to go back to the payment and update it to reflect the other invoice. What this means is that the original invoice that the client paid you will show as past due, as still due, and then we're gonna apply this to the new one. So we open the original payment transaction, we're gonna uncheck the original invoice, and we're gonna check the new one. We want to make sure that it's still $750 and that only $750 are being applied because this invoice is for $775, but you have not collected that fee yet. It's optional whether you want to collect a fee, but it's recommended that you do at least to recoup the bank fee that you had to pay, but it's very common to also cost a little extra for the inconvenience and the extra work that you're doing to manage all of this. So now that that's done, we're going to click save and closed. You will get a warning because this means that transactions are linked to each other in this particular case, that is okay. And now what we, we go back, we are going to see that the original invoice is now open so that the client can pay it again. And then we're going to see that the new invoice that we had created today shows a balance due of that $25 fee. Now you can collect a new payment from the client or send them a statement, whatever you need to do. And then when you receive that information, you will just click on receive payment. You will select the customer and both of those invoices will be selected so then you can record the new payment. But wait, there is one more thing. We still need to record that original fee that the bank charged you. So I am going to exit out of this and we're going to click on plus new expense and we're gonna record 
that fee that the bank charge. In this particular case, the bank is Chase. So you will enter the payee as the bank that you use. The date is the date that the check bounced and the reference number is gonna be NSF fee. Then the category is gonna be bank charges. If you don't have a category for that or something like it, you can go ahead and create one right from this screen. And let's say that the bank charged you the $35. So we'll, we had charged the client 25, so we'll make that $25. And then save and close. Now, when you are going to do your reconciliation and match the transactions in the bank feed, you're going to see that there are transactions for both of that. So let's take a look in banking. We're going to look at the bank register for the checking account so that we can see those transactions. So here you're gonna see the bank charges and you're going to see the return check. So when you are processing the bank feed, make sure that you click on find match, do not add, that way you will not duplicate it. So what I'm referring to is in the bank feed here, when you see the transaction, it's not showing here yet, but what you will do is you will click on find match, do not categorize, you will find the match and be able to then reconcile and have everything recorded correctly. I hope that this is helpful. If you have any questions, I am only an email away, support at floridavirtualbookkeeper.com. Have a nice day.